And now it is. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Celebrate TV Live. I'm your host, Peter Lee. With me today, as always, is the tech genius that makes it all happen. He's my cameraman, producer, writer, editor, and he's also my husband. He's your friend of mine, Phil Gortimer. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're watching us from, and welcome to Sunday. <laughs> all right, today it's all about what's in your spice cabinet. But before we do that, we're going to make a cocktail because that's what we do here at Let's Celebrate TV. We celebrate, and what better way than to start with a cocktail? We're going to go a little old school today. Now, we had a kind of a rough week, so we, we need this cocktail today. We're making a Manhattan, but not just any Manhattan. I'm going to make an orange rye Manhattan. I'm going to start with one of our favorite ryes. This is from Eight Oaks Distillery. Uh, this is a Pennsylvania straight rye whiskey. They make several. Uh, they make several whiskeys, rums, vodkas, gins, and we get this from the, they have a shop in the Allentown uh, farmer's market uh, near the Allentown fairgrounds. And we go up once a year for a RV show and we always go by their, their shop and stock up. So this is a great little mom and pop family run distillery and it's wonderful. We need six ounces. This is going to make two drinks, two big boy drinks. right over our ice. Now, sweet vermouth is next. This is our favorite. I need three ounces. So it's a two to one ratio. Whether that's ounces, mills, cups, liters, buckets, right in. Now, where does the orange come in? I've got some orange bitters. And you may think it's unusual that using orange in a Manhattan, but especially with rye, it's really a great match of flavors. Just maybe three good dashes. Maybe four. Four. I don't want to hear any whining. That's too bitter. These are great, though, because mm, they smell like oranges. Now, normally I would shake this, but today I'm going to be a little refined, and I'm going to stir it. What's the difference between stirring and shaking? Shaking will get the drink colder, and it breaks down the ice a little bit, so it dilutes the drink a little bit, but it also adds a lot of air, so you just have to wait for it to clear a little bit before you drink it. Uh, that's what they say when they say it bruises the gin if you shake a martini. It doesn't really, but it just adds the air for a moment or two. Stirring, you can get it almost as cold, but doesn't get as diluted. And, you know, today we need a little bit of a stronger drink. All right, here are my glasses, nice and chilled. I want to add some more orange flavor. So I have a wedge of orange. I'm just going to rim the glass. Whoops, one cut. There we go, that's what I meant to do. Oh, okay. Pretty simple. This just gives you, when you taste it, just that extra little bit of orange now we're going to strain this in. Beautiful. Now I need to add just a little more. Gild the lily, so to speak. I have some orange peel here. And I don't know if you'll see this on camera, but we'll try. I'm going to squeeze it and get all those little orange oils. Now, if you saw the bubbles all popped, I'm gonna put that in there. That little bit of essential oil from the peel really puts it over the top. All right, Philip, you wanna come get your cocktail? Sure. It's been a tough week, we deserve this. It has been. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Oh, yeah. That is really good. It's mm. funny. He didn't drink cocktails until he met me. He only drank beer. 
So I taught him everything he knows. Now, if he and I make a martini side by side, exact same recipe, same ingredients, his will taste better than mine. However, Manhattans, I get the Manhattans. All right, let's see who's here. Um, we got Jackson from Facebook. Yes, this Hi, is Jackson. fun, Jackson. We do this all the time. Welcome to LCTV. Hold on, let me get the right super source up. There we go. Where are my notes? Here are my notes. All right, so we've got Jackson. There you are. And then... Any of our regular crew in? Uh, let's see, we got Della. Hi, Della. <laughs> you guys do a lot of cocktails. I'm not sure you ever told us your go-to cocktail. Actually, this is this it. Is right here. here is our go-to. Well, let's correct that. A classic Manhattan, not necessarily orange rye. Right. We have either a brown, white, brown night or a white night. White night is a martini. Brown night is a Manhattan. All right. And Hank's here. Hey, Hank. Good to see you. It was cold here in Phoenix overnight, 29 degrees. That's Barrett Jackson. Auto week, nice. It's always cold in the early morning. I think it was about 29 last night here, too, wasn't it, dear? Yeah. I mean, it is winter. We should kind of expect it. All right, and Melissa's here. Hey, Melissa, good to see you. Good afternoon. Wondering what your most used or go-to spices are. What do you use, like to use cardamom in? Ah, that's a good, we'll good save question. That. Well, we'll save that. Actually, let um, me mark that, and we'll bring that back up a little later. Okay. All right, and Kevin says... Oh, hi, Kenzie. <laughs> that's our son and, and his daughter. She calls all the all the grandkids call me Gampy. All Long right. story behind it. We don't need to go into that today. <laughs> Maybe around Father's Day we'll do that. Oh, Gary says, "I have still not seen the cats. You promised. Well, you know, cats, cats are cats. They they work on their schedules. I'm sure they'll be around. When we were trying to film uh, last week, there were cats down here pestering us, and while we were setting up, they were down here making noise." Uh, and even last week they came through. So if I if they come down, I can snatch one up. I'll put them up on camera for you. And that is Hi, the correct Dixie. statement. Yes, ma'am. Cheers to you, Dixie and Phil. All right. So it looks like we're all caught up with the hellos. So we can get started. Yeah. Wow, that's kind of weird. What's weird? Nah, I'm just looking at the studio, and it's still displaying the spice rack, so I guess the 10 minute delay is not valid, but that's okay. Yeah, there's some weird delay going on, like we're in real time and then there's some, like, some people are three minutes behind us, it's also saying it's 10 minutes behind us, so I don't know what's going on, but we'll see. Hey, at least I didn't push the wrong button this time, so we didn't have a... Yes, but you didn't turn my mic on. I, so we didn't have an end the show, I just forgot to turn his mic on, so Silly little. only one mistake this time. That's okay. So I have notes today. I like it when I have notes. You may not, but I do. <laughs> so we're talking about what's in your spice cabinet today. Um, what brought this up? Well, Phil got me a new spice cabinet. I had uh, in one of my kitchen cabinets like this, I had a nice little rack. Yeah, this is what he bought me for Christmas. And I had to clean it out a lot. It was just things would get lost in it, even though there were little shelves. So he bought me this system, which forced me to, again, go through everything, purge, and set up in a drawer. Uh, I actually had an extra kitchen drawer, so not everyone has that. So now we're making good use of it. Um, so what's in your spice cabinet? Um, there's a lot of things that we all keep in our spice cabinets, and I'm embedding that coming right off the holidays, a lot of us, myself included, you know, I have no idea what's in my spice cabinet from Bailey. Yeah, well, <laughs> time to find out. Um, I've done this too for the holidays. You know, there's that Auntie Janet's gingerbread that I make once a year and I go out and what do I do? I buy a whole new thing of ground cloves and I say, I'm going to use them this year. I'm going to find, and then they get shoved to the back of the cabinet and forgotten about. And then the next Christmas comes and I buy new and then I have five things of ground cloves, and it's like some of these are 10 years old. So that's what prompted this whole idea for this live stream topic. 
So, Spice Cabinet, you're probably wondering, at least I've always wondered, and I've been asked this, what's the difference? Spices, herb, seasoning, it's all just jarred stuff, who cares? Well, there is a little difference. Um, in broad terms, herbs and spices come from plants, right? Sage, dried sage, ground sage, etc. Herbs are generally fresh, the fresh part, the leaves, the stalks, it's when it's not dried. And spices is when it's dried, it's the leaves, the root, uh, the seeds even. So for example, coriander. I have some coriander seeds. This is the seed to the cilantro plant. And it has a very different flavor when you use it whole or when you grind it up than the actual leafy cilantro plant. I like using these in pickle spices. Um, this is something I'll throw in soups and stews, kind of like you would with cardamom, uh, but it just adds an extra background flavor. That's really kind of nice. So that's kind of like the broad thing between herbs and spices. The other thing is um, spices are tend to be a vegetarian, not a vegetarian, a vegetable or vegetation product. But they're mixed with things. So they're mixed with other seasonings, salt, sugars, things. So something like Montreal steak seasoning has a lot of plant-based things in it, but then they have extra salt and sugars and things like that mixed in. And that's where you get that kind of fine line between herbs, dried herbs, spices, whatever. At least that's my definition. So then there are some common things. I'll bet you all have this in your pantry, in your cupboard. Um, someone just said they have no idea, and there are times when I don't have an idea what's in mine either, and I start rooting through. Hopefully my new little drawer will keep me a little better organized. But you know, there's parsley. Most people probably have parsley, dried parsley, or dill, paprika. You may not have used it since 1972, but you probably have a jar of paprika. Uh, chili powder, maybe some ground sage. Nutmeg, you probably have ground nutmeg, especially coming off the holidays. Um, All right, actually, there's a question on that. Let okay. me get over to that screen, okay. Whole spice versus ground, like nutmeg from Avery. Well, I'll tell you, I have whole nutmeg here. We can do a zoom in. This is what a whole nutmeg looks like. And this is once you start grating it down, like on a microplaner, that's what it looks like. I prefer the whole. It is sometimes a little more expensive, but I find the whole pods last longer than the ground, and it has a much better flavor. Now, it's stronger uh, because it's not pre-ground and sitting on a shelf somewhere. So a lot of times I use less of it than I would with ground. But that, you know, that all depends on, on what it is you're using. I also keep, you know, I have coriander seeds, but I have ground coriander also. Uh, I use both. I don't use them interchangeably, but I, I do use them both. Um, anyway, there are things, you probably have cinnamon, maybe you have some thyme or marjoram. Uh, bay leaf is one of those underutilized and underappreciated uh, herbs, dried herbs, that you probably have in your kitchen in your spice cabinet, and you wonder, why did I buy those? What do they really do? But really, they, they give one of those flavors that when you don't have it there, you miss it. You go, something's missing. This is good. But, you know, like, like in a beef stew or any type of savory thing like that, a lot of sauces really benefit. So those are some common things that we all have. I prefer only fresh herbs. Okay, and you know, I do most of the time too. I use fresh herbs, but there are some things that you can't really get fresh, like paprika. What is paprika? Paprika is, well, I don't even really know. It's paprika, that's all it says on the bottle. Ingredients, organic paprika. Uh, but I've never seen it fresh to use it fresh. So, it, you know, would I use fresh sage over dried? Probably, depending on what it was for, but yeah, probably. Um, but a lot of times I want dried sage, so it all depends on what you're making. Then we get into those spice blends and those dried herb blends, and that's where it gets a little more uncommon or maybe tricky. You know, there's like, uh, if you've heard of Herb de Provence, 
which is a combination of dried herbs. There's savory, rosemary, basil, thyme, and oregano. Oh, and someone asked Jolene, what is Herbs de Provence? That's what it is generally. Um, occasionally it'll have lavender in it, dried lavender, which is nice. Uh, but it, it's a pre-made blend of dried herbs that is used a lot in French cooking or French type cooking. You know, then you see those Italian blends that are, you know, rosemary, basil, garlic. It varies depending on the, the uh, brand that you get. And of course, there's poultry seasoning, which is one of my favorite go-to things, uh, which is generally sage, rosemary, and thyme all ground up. Never use dry parsley, always use fresh. Yes, Hank, you know what? I will agree with you 100% because dry parsley has zero flavor, and I don't think it's even that pretty looking when you sprinkle it on something for just the color. Uh, I, I don't even keep it around for that. Uh, you can usually get fresh parsley year-round. Yeah. So, I like fresh oregano, but most people feel that the dried has more flavor. But that's one of those, I think, that you want to check the, date, the expiration date on it and keep it fresher than, you know, it lasts on your pantry for a long time, but I don't know. Of course, there's the steak seasoning, like I showed you. And one of the big trends right now is everything bagel seasoning. And, you know, that's usually different sesame seeds and poppies and garlic and salt. And what's that face for you're making, dear? Well, because what do we use it the most for? We rim a Bloody Mary glass with Well, that's true. That's true. We do use it a lot. We do use it a lot. Oh, here's a good one. Savory, sweet, sweet or spicy. I would assume that refers to uh, spices. Yeah. Um, it, again, that's one of the things that depends on what you want to cook. Uh, I don't know of any... Well, I guess just sweet paprika is kind of sweet. Um, things like lemon pepper. What is one spice or herb that you bought and used once? From Jerry. <laughs> uh, so I have to admit, uh, garam masala is something that I bought once for one recipe uh, that I made, and I've not used it since. The oh, garam it masala the mixed nuts. Mixed nuts. Yeah, and it's delicious. But I, I, I don't ever use it. Which is kind of funny because we have lots of Indian friends who cook with garam masala, but other than doing nuts, we've not. Yeah, it's true. <clears throat> Ooh, here's another interesting one that just came in. Okay. Opinion on freeze-dried herbs from Geneva. Okay, well, you know, uh, like freeze-dried chives and dried parsley, I'm not a big fan of freeze-dried herbs. Um, Bay leaves, I don't believe, are freeze-dried. I think they're just dried. But most of the time, the green herbs that they freeze-dry, I've tried them. Maybe freeze-dried onion, the onion flakes, but that's not really an herb. That's kind of a vegetable. At least it has some flavor. Now, we're a little spoiled here. We have a commercial wholesale uh, produce place yeah. within a couple of miles yeah. of here. So we can buy herbs like giant bunches of mint for like 90 cents. Yeah, and yeah giant things of um, rosemary and dill, again, all for 90 cents. Yeah. And mm -hmm. even if you use a little bit and throw it away, it was 90 cents. Well, we try not to throw away, but yeah, that's true. Good old Virtios. Good old Virtios. All right. Um, all right, it's back to you. Back to me, Bob. I had to type in the Facebook stuff again. Oh, <laughs> that's not coming over? Uh, some of them are. Okay, well, that's fine. Oh, wait. <laughs> what? Oh, oh, wait. What? No, that already came through. Sorry. You sure? Yeah, this one with... <laughs> so this one where it did work oh. from Facebook, but yeah. we saw that. Okay. And the cats have not come back down, so they'll be here. No, it's because they had their wet food, so they're asleep yeah, now. Yeah, they had their dinner, which... It was that, or they would be here pestering me, all five of them, and that would not be a good thing. Oops. How do you feel about pre-packaged spice blends and packets from Mary? You know, it depends on what it is, honestly. Uh, I tend to not buy too many spice blends, like Italian herbs blends and things like that. Um, something like Old Bay seasoning would be an exception because I would use it on a lot of things, but I don't buy too many. I prefer to make my own. 
But some of them, you know, they're, they're decent. I just, you have to wonder sometimes, like, how long has this been sitting in the warehouse on the shelf? So let's talk about how do you store your spices, really. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of school of thought. A lot of people are going to say, oh, there you go, Amanda, best way to store spices. A lot of people are going to say, just throw them in the cabinet. Doesn't matter. They last forever. That's not quite true. I like keeping them in an airtight container. Now, most modern things like this are pretty airtight, so they're fine. I just have these fancy jars because Phil bought it for me for Christmas. Um, but no, I would say keep them in airtight containers, keep them in a cool, dark place. Uh, chemicals, or from chemistry, you know, sunlight and light makes things break down sometimes. So that's why a lot of labels will say keep in a cool, dark place like, what is it? Um, vanilla. Vanilla extract. You know, it comes in those little brown bottles for a reason, and that's to cut down the light, because that will cause it all to break down and lose its flavor. Um, so yeah, I say airtight containers, in a drawer, in a cupboard, away from, you know, you don't want it right over the stove where it's hot all the time, next to the stove, or in a drawer behind you or something, uh, where it's not necessarily cool, but not heated from the stove. But airtight containers are important. What spice or herb do you not like? Gosh, that's a good question. I'm not that big of a fan of cumin. I'll use it. I have some that I bought recently for a recipe, and it wasn't terrible. And I think it was something that I made for the show, um, which I don't remember what it was now. It has kind of that almost smoky, tangy, almost citrusy taste to it. It's just not my first choice of of uh, spices or herbs to go to. All right, let's just remind everyone that if you're in chat, mm -hmm. tell us where you're from and feel free to ask any questions right. and we'll answer them right now. Yep, yep, yep. So a lot of people wonder and they ask me quite often, how long should I keep these spices around? How long are they going to last? And some people believe they last forever. And indeed, a lot of them do last for a very long time. Now, last time I was down at the family home where my uh, oldest brother and my sister live, uh, <laughs> there was still, uh, from sometime in the early 70s, like around 74, 75, my mother, someone gave my mother this spice rack. And my dad mounted on the wall, like back here, right next to her stove, and had all these nice little bottles of McCormick spices. And it was all of them. And she was so happy. And he, I'm sure you've seen them all. And the last time I went down there, that spice rack was still there. And I went over and I was looking at it. And there was a jar of thyme that had a little bit out of it. And it was still there. It was the original jar. So I thought, and I said to my sister, uh, Heather, do you know how long that's been there? And she's like, yeah, like 50 years. I know. I'm getting to it. Uh, so I would not use any of those spices that have been sitting there in my mother's kitchen uh, since 1970s, you know, 50 years, there's a practical limit. Is there any spices that doesn't have an expiration date or loses its potency? Other than maybe vanilla extract, and, and I- And salt. And salt. Salt never expires. Uh, maybe vanilla extract, but really, even if they don't have an expiration date on the bottle, you really have to wonder, you know, because they will lose their potency, even in an airtight container. After a long time, they're, they're just going to start to break down anyway and not taste as good. So they might not poison you, but they're not going to have the taste that they once had. So my rule basically is when in doubt, throw it out. Um, yeah. Like this guy, we are talking about this. I can't find a date on the cinnamon sticks, and, and they might be fine. I think, you know, still sort of smells like cinnamon. Shelf life of dried spices. Well, that all depends on the spice. These, here's the thing with these cinnamon sticks, I don't remember when I bought them. Was it when we moved in here seven years ago? Was it in the old house there we lived for 11 years? Or was it the house before that that we lived for four years? Uh, I don't remember. I don't know why I bought them and why I bought this many. I probably had some grand ideas of I'll use them in potpourri and in, you know, cider and, and stews or whatever and so this is a great way to buy spices if I use cinnamon every day but if you don't 
buy them like if you don't use it all the time. I wouldn't buy them this big. And since I don't remember when I bought them, now that it's Phil, guess where these are going? They're going right in the trash. And that's what you should do with a lot of the spices. Um, I say a couple times a year, maybe even three or four times a year, go through your spice cabinet. Take a Saturday afternoon and look at the expiration dates. I think if you look in your notes, you've got something on that. Well, yes, I do. So, whole spices, like nutmeg or coriander, um, peppercorns, allspice, caraway seeds, they will last three to four years. Absolutely. But after that, mm, I would just, they probably have lost their potency. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I got to put this up just because okay. it's great. Okay. <laughs> In the camera. Hey guys, I cleaned up my mom's kitchen cupboards a few months ago because they were moving out of the country. And she had spices in there from when I was in high school. Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. <laughs> that's say moms are. And I hope you went, oh, I remember these, a moment of nostalgia, and then threw them right in the trash. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, it's been our experience that when you go to the store and you look at the spice and there's an expiration date, Please be careful. That expiration date is if the jar has not been opened. Right. Once you open it, the clock starts. Now, there is no official rule, but most people agree that within six months to a year after you open, it loses a tremendous amount of its potency. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to poison you. So ground stuff would be like two to four years. And again, you know, once you open any of them, the clock ticks faster. Um, ground and whole leafy herbs like basil, oregano, rosemary, seasoning blends, one to three years. But I, I don't use dried leafy herbs. I thought dried spices and herbs lasted forever. You just have to rub them between your palms. Well, uh, yes and no. So if they're fairly new, maybe six, eight months out, coming up on a year out, they're starting to lose their potency. Yeah, you can depending on what it is, rub it in your palm, or you can heat it in a pan to toast it or in a little oil, and that will help get that last little bloom out of them. But really, there comes a point where you can just rub as much as you want, and you're not going to get anything out of them. You're going to get dust, and uh, yeah, so better to not do that, or not rely on that anyway. But a lot of people really believe that. How can I tell an herb gone bad from a good one? Well, I'm not sure what you mean by bad. Now, fresh herbs, obviously, if they're rotten, they're rotten. If they're browned and dried up or whatever, that's easy. Dried stuff, you know, it really doesn't necessarily go bad per se. It's just going to lose its flavor. So if you've got, uh, you know, let, let's say you've got some paprika. Like, this is smoked paprika. Right. I've heard the dried herbs don't actually go bad. They lose their potency from Kathy. Yeah, exactly. So this is fairly new, this smoked paprika. And it smells smoky. So if I open this and it didn't smell smoky anymore, I might give it a shake to uh, um, activate it. But I would probably just toss it because it, it's useless at that point. Uh, it, it might make something look pretty, but why? And some uh, websites and chefs say, well, you can wake it up by putting them in some oil right, or putting them in some earlier. water. But why? Again, most right. spices, with the exception of the very expensive ones, are $2 a bottle, $3 a bottle. And I actually like the way McCormick says in their website. And if you've all seen those little tiny bottles that McCormick has of spices, well, there's a reason they put them in those small ones. Either A, because people only use them once, or B, they go flat so quickly they don't want you to waste your money. Right. Now, something like paprika, it will turn dark. Like, it'll, it'll turn almost black when it's at its end of life. This is still pretty bright. But I've noticed, once I've opened them, they do, because exposed to, uh, yep, right in the trash. <laughs> Excellent. Now, this has a due date on it, it looks like. Or expiration October 2025, Best Buy. So but I have a little time on this. But that is if you haven't opened it. Right. That's not when, if I've opened it, it's good until 2025. Correct. We need to be clear with that. Right. Because every time I open it, more air gets in. 
And now I'm locking in air and it's, it's exposed and it's going to oxidize or whatever. Lance, do some spices last longer than others? Oh, absolutely, absolutely they do. Whole ones, whole seeds, whole nuts like nutmeg or coriander seeds, these are gonna last longer than their ground counterparts. And that's because all the oils and things are sealed inside. When you grind them and it's all exposed and it's reduced down, it's already broken down. So yeah, they will last longer, absolutely. All right, you want to take a break and recap yourself, and I'll go do my little spiel. Oh, is it time for you to do your spiel already? Yeah, and then okay. you can come back do and your spiel. see whatever your notes are. And I can drink my cocktail while you're doing that. All right, let me just get my screens all ready. And do we lights. show them Eight Oaks's website, or do we forget? We did not. Okay. Um, I'll put a link in the, all right. in the notes below. All right. So show off m and I'm going to. All right, let me... Flip over here to the right mm -hmm. screen. All right, as most of you know, I am a big proponent of small YouTube channels and we like to feature a small YouTube channel in every one of our live streams. Obviously, we give preference to ones that we do ourselves or come chat. So I'd like to uh, point out, this is Mark and Michelle. It's Adventures with Eminem. Now, they're not a cooking channel per se, um, but they're an adventure vlogging. So it's a cross between a, a, uh, a travel log, um, a food tasting, and discoveries. And a lot of them, they'll go into restaurants and try a specific item, or they'll try a specific thing, or it's a day in New York. Um, I'm pretty sure these guys are in North Jersey, or we're here in South Jersey, because a lot of their activities are in New York. And they have lots and lots of videos. Lots of videos. And they're fun. They're short. They're fun. And they're kind of neat um, because they uh, pick one thing. Like here, they're having a little <clears throat> fun here with um, Wendy's Burgers and so on. So if you get a chance, go check out their site. They also have lots of merchandise. If you're into swag, pick up some of their swag and support them. But go over, watch one of their videos, watch one of their videos, leave them a comment, say hi, tell them that Phil and Pete from Let's Celebrate TV sent you. Yep. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and help them out. They comment on our videos a lot. They, they do comment they do watch a lot of our videos. Regularly, which we yep. appreciate. All right, back to you. It's all back yours. To me, Yay, back to me. So, uh, yeah. You might be wondering, is dried ever better than fresh? And if so, when are dried herbs better? A lot of times, some of the dried herbs and spices will have a more intense flavor, and that's because they're dried and the flavor is concentrated. But... Like we keep saying, the moment you crack open that container, that flavor starts to leak out and go away because the air gets in. Some herbs and spices, you can use less when it's dried than if you use fresh. Maybe like a good ratio is one to three. So if you need three tablespoons of fresh sage, you would use one tablespoon of dried sage. It would be that three to one ratio. Um, I, I keep saying I don't really use dried herbs very much, but there are times oregano is, is a good one. A lot of people prefer dried oregano over fresh oregano. Um, it just has a more intense flavor and it has a pretty long shelf life, even for dried. Um, I remember as a kid working in the deli uh, when I was in high school and we would get these 50 pound bags of dried oregano. and. They're like, when the hell are we ever going to use that? And, but we made so many hoagies, uh, or subs, or heroes, or grinders, wherever it is in the country that you call them. Um, we would go through one like every two months, a whole 50 pounds, but it just reeked of oregano. So one of our chef friends has a little mental saying. It says, if you cook with it and you put it in your dish, then use dried. If you put it on the plate or the serving dish, Use fresh. And yes and no. Like I, I will use dried stuff in sauces, in vinaigrettes, things like that. Uh, especially in a vinaigrette because it, it would, or a salad dressing of some sort. Um, 
I like just like fresh herbs better, but you don't normally put them in until the very end. So, yeah. Do you use a spice grinder? I have, actually. I used to use a little coffee grinder as a spice grinder. Actually, you use your rasp more. Yeah, I do. I use my little microplaner more than anything, like for my nutmeg, things like that. But I keep thinking I need to get another little coffee grinder for that. Uh, you know, one of those little cheap $10 ones. Just so if I want to make my own ground coriander uh, or something like that. What spice or herb? I thought we saw that already. What spice or herb do you not like? And the answer was cumin is not my favorite. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's why. Because I pushed the button right next to the one I wanted. There. Show me the heat. I love hot and spicy foods. What herbs and spices can I use? Well, there's a million chili peppers out there these days that will add heat. Um, but that's another spice that neither Phil or I really care for that much is the dried red pepper flakes. I usually keep them around just in case but I find that to be a bitter heat. It makes things bitter. Yeah, um, we were just testing a recipe yesterday yeah. that called for it, and I immediately knew what it was when we got yeah. rid of it. Cayenne pepper or even chili, ground chili, is a better way, in my, yeah. our opinion, mm -hmm. to not get the bitter flavor but get yeah. some heat. Mm -hmm. But for those, we actually prefer uh, sauces like crystal sauce and things like that. Hot sauces, Tabasco, things like that, yeah. But, you know, if you don't have it and you have something in your, in your spice cabinet, then, you know, keep some uh, cayenne around. It lasts an okay t amount of time. There's also hot paprika you could use, Hungarian hot paprika, which has a very woodsy taste to it. And then what do... What? Go ahead. No, no, no go ahead. Go ahead. No, Hank's got a good one here. Okay. What method do you use in organizing your spice drawer? Well, being a former librarian, it's all alphabetical. That's usually the easiest, I think. Um, right. So there's some random stuff on the top left that we haven't moved to other jars. Uh, but there's bay leaves, cayenne, celery, chili powder, chipotle chili, coriander, curry powder, you can see. Um, all the cumin and curry need to be flipped. And crushed red pepper. Someone didn't sing the alphabet song when he was organizing it for me. Uh, well, you could do it yourself. Just I tried, saying. and you pushed me out of the way and said, I'll do it. So alphabetical-ish, we'll say. <laughs> Ish. Ish. Well, when I didn't have that set up, when I had it just in a cabinet above me and on little shelves, I kept it with the stuff I used all the time right in the front. Um, you know, And things that I use a lot. I think someone asked, what are my favorites? So my favorite is thyme. Uh, I go through a lot of dried thyme. I use that in a lot of sauces and gravies. I always keep it around. Uh, and I never worry about it that it's too old because it just doesn't last. Um, I keep things ground sage, poultry seasoning. I use a lot of poultry seasoning. Um, and that's one of those blends that varies between brand. But I always keep that around. And I never, ever have to worry that how long have I had this? Because there have been too many times when I've run out of it and have had to dash to the store. So those are some things that I use. But I would keep those in front that I can reach easily. And then the other stuff will get shoved to the back of the cabinet. And you know, then I'd be going through and going, what the heck is this? And like, oh, how long has this been in here? So you might be tempted to, to buy in bulk things like this. Um, this is left over from when we did Low Country old, Boil. Low Country Boil up at camp. And I think we had, what, three or four of them we bought? And this mm -hmm. was the last one. I don't know if I'll ever use this much unless we do another Low Country Boil. And it says Best Buy November 15th, 23. And it's already been open since, when was that? June? June, yeah. So it's garbage time. I'll keep it a little while longer if we make Aspen Hill shrimp. But other than that, it'll be gone soon. This we will use, and this seems to have a pretty long shelf life. Now, I don't know if it will expire before we use it all, um, but I do use this quite a bit. Um, I don't know what possessed me to buy this great big container. What is in poultry seasoning? Poultry seasoning is generally, I think I had that earlier. 
Yes, it's generally sage, rosemary, and thyme. Various brands, you know, there's Bell Seasoning, there's McCormick's, there's a few others out there. They tweak the ratios, they add, sometimes they'll have salt in it, so read your okay, labels. Okay, admit it everybody, you sang the song in your head. Parsley, sage, rosemary, and thyme, no. Um, that's basically it. sage, rosemary, and thyme, there's no parsley, generally, but who knows. You know, you never know what some of these manufacturers are sneaking in their stuff. What is your favorite item in your spice cabinet? Well, that's a good question because my new current favorite, my new best friend, is this smoked paprika. I bought it for a recipe and it was just the most amazing thing. I think it was something we just did recently, like maybe it was in the sauce for the prosciutto wrapped salmon. And I bought it and I opened it and wow, I'm just in love. So I've been sneaking this into a lot of stuff. I'm probably going to use it in our dinner tonight. Do you have a preference of one brand of spice over another? Um, yes. I really like the Simply Organic spices. Um, they are maybe a little more expensive, but I find their quality better. My own personal preference. But you know, I, it, when needed, I will get what I like to get. Um, I couldn't, the only brand of whole nutmeg I could get was some brand I've never heard of before, but they had, remember, there was a little packet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But guess but, what, they're fine. So something like this for nutmeg, it, I don't think it matters, but for other things, I, I prefer the Simply Organics. Then McCormick, those are my two top. And the advantage we like of the, um, Simply Organic is they come in glass, right. in sealed. Right. They are very close to the same size as what's in our drawers, mm -hmm. so we just drop them straight right. in. So you and can they see. are clearly labeled on the back, yeah. the expiration date, and it says right on it, once opened. And it says, ingredients, organic smoked paprika. Nothing else, no other nonsense, which I like. I don't want to pay for a bunch of you know, sodium ciliacate that'll keep it flowing. No, just give me the paprika. I don't need stuff that's going to pour it out. But that's a great question, Lance. Thank you. Not sure what Hank's referring to here. I'm assuming it's about the preference of uh, spices, but I don't know. Okay, thank you, Hank. Oh, here's a good one. I know the answer to this, but let's see. What is the cheapest spice and the most expensive spice? Well, I don't know what the cheapest is. Yes, you do. Salt? Yep. Okay, apparently I do with salt. Uh, the most expensive would probably be saffron. And that's because true saffron is, there's a very special type of iris and it's the little stamens inside. I think there's like two or three stamens in each flower and it has to be harvested by hand. So a little patch of these irises here would produce just a tiny amount and it would be I don't know, probably seven or eighty dollars worth of saffron. It is the most expensive spice, but it's it's wonderful. It's used a lot not only to add color, but it does have a pretty unique flavor. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's kind of one of those things you probably see on TV and all the fancy chefs are like, oh, I'm making saffron risotto, and they grab a handful, and that's because you know the network paid for twenty thousand dollars worth of saffron that they could grab a handful. Hints for keeping bulk seasonings fresh longer. Do you move the spices into smaller jars? So that larger containers are not open as frequently, does it matter? Well, oh, that's a great question. I hadn't thought of that. Um, I might, and that's just because Santa brought me one for Christmas. If I wanted to save this, I might transfer it to a smaller um, container, or I have Santa brought me one of those vacuum sealers for Christmas, so you could probably put this in one of those canisters and vacuum seal it in the canister, and that would help. But just keep in mind, every time you crack it open, you're letting air in and the flavor out, but that might help. But I think really keeping them just in general airtight containers in a dark, cold place, in a cabinet, you know, not over top your stove um, is probably the safest and best thing. And sort of like people that hoard, the more spices you collect and put in a drawer, in a cabinet or a shelf or in your kitchen, chances are the more of them are just dead. Yeah. 
Yeah, I need. To, I should call my sister and ask if she's done anything with that spice cabinet yet. <laughs> Heather, do you still have some of that 1974 time? I'm out. <laughs> wow, that was bitter. <laughs> I, I'm just asking a question. Yeah, right. What else we got going on, dear? Uh, hold on, we got uh, non-spice related questions. Uh huh. From Courtney, when is your next dinner party and how do I get an invitation? Well, if that's Courtney from work, um, stop sending me nonsense at the end of the day. Um, I don't know what our next dinner party is. Are we doing one for Valentine's? Probably. Maybe not a fancy dress-up affair with photographers and all that. Maybe we'll do a Valentine's. Yeah, I think we will. Have you used spices in cocktails? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, especially in Bloody Mary's, we use a lot of spices there, including rimming the glass in um, everything, bagel. everything bagel seasoning. Uh, we've also rimmed the glass in Old Bay. Uh, but yeah, we have. Uh, we were looking at that last night too, some other cocktails that use spices in them. We've used cinnamon in several. Uh, we've, used, we've used some peppers in some of them. Yeah. We've got a few that use rosemary. Matter of fact, That's the latest true. craze of, is to yeah. burn the rosemary yeah. when you put it in. Yeah, we do a lot of rosemary gin. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Lance, you know, whether we come to you next time or you come down here, maybe your job would be to invent or find a cocktail that uses some sort of herb and spice and make it for us. All right, Karen's got the right idea here. I have all my spices on three different Lazy Susans in my cupboard. That way they don't get shoved to the back <laughs> to the abyss. <laughs> yes, very good. I used to do that in the old house. Uh, I had a Lazy Susan. The problem was it was one of those ones in the bottom corner, and it was a little big, so things would go flying off into the back <laughs> corner, and then the cats now would have to crawl in and get it. But that's a good idea. If I didn't have that drawer, I might consider doing that because I, I had these little plastic shelf unit and that it was like little steps and they, they just didn't work out for me. Yeah, we got one of them. We should do that for camp. We have that at camp, but maybe those little portable, little small plastic. Okay, here's suit. somebody who knows us well. What did you get on the last wine trip? Gosh. What, well, the we, last we, wine we, trip was... Uh, Here's hold day. on, yeah, let me get myself on screen here. Our last wine trip with uh, Lance and Ken out in Long Island was on New, uh, Year's weekend. New Year's weekend. So a lot of the things were closed, but our regulars like Sparkling Point for Champagne were open, yeah. and we actually got to check out two new ones, mm -hmm. uh, Clavis and... Clovis. Clovis uh, and some other ones, but... Bedol. Um, we were reserved. Normally on our weekends, we bring back 18 or 24, because if you're only going once every three months, you got to make it worth it. We only came back with 12, but four of them were champagnes. Yeah, we brought back a lot of champagne We did, bring, and we've already drunk in it. No, we haven't. We have we've one, had one of them. No, there's not two. There's like three in there. We had one for, because we have, I bought something for last week's live stream, I think. I know there's more than one in there still. Yeah, we did, we did it last week because of the first new live stream at our new time. Right. We're and making our we, West Coast people much happier. And then we did another one for the champagne cocktail. I'm hoping when Mitch and Philip get uh, settled in their new house that we'll start to see them on some of our yeah. live streams. You know, the, the cocktail that you still have to edit and produce. Well, yeah, it'll be, yeah. There, it'll be there Friday. Uh-huh. It's partially edited. So Lance, do you remember where we all went? We went to Sparkling Point. We went to Sanino's. Uh, I don't remember. Oops. Did we go to Clovis Point? Yes. Oh, yeah, 1123. That yes. was the new one. We liked it. Was it was the new one. Yep, 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 yep. And we got a good cup Franc there and the yes. Merlot. Yeah. So, yeah, we, we always bring home Cab Cabernet Franc from Long Island. We bring home several Merlots, but generally it's whatever we can get. When are we going to see more guest stars like your grandchildren? Well, we're working on that because the oldest two are, what, almost 16 and almost 14. I don't know how the hell that happened. 13 and 16. Um, I think she's already 13. She'll be 14. No, wait. You turned 63 this year or 64? 64. So then she'll be 14. 
because yep. she was born on your 50th. Yep. Uh, yeah, so the oldest two will be coming in. We're talking about having one of our younger ones, Mackenzie, Kevin and Emily's daughter. Uh, but then mom and dad will have to be here to help. But she is a big fan, and, and they have her helping in the kitchen all the time. And uh, Clovis Point was last place. Yeah. Bo is good. We liked it. Um, but yeah, no, the grandkids will be in. I'm also working on some friends of ours. I'm trying to get, uh, we have a friend, Christine Hagen. Christine is from France, and she, her husband is one of Phil's bosses. Uh, but they're great friends of ours. Christine was a mystery novelist, and, and she has, I don't know, 18, 20 plus, I don't know how many books, but she's, they're really fun, fun reads. And she's from France, and she is a brilliant cook. If you put my cook of on next to hers, you would put mine straight in the garbage because hers is just, you know. Uh, she just gave me a recipe that I'm going to be making soon, but I keep trying to coax her to come on to the show and show us how it's really done. So I'm working on it, but we'll have some more guest stars. All right. So let's talk about stuff we got coming up. Our next live stream should be really good. If you have kids, but even if you don't, because there's always that relative. Yeah. Yeah. The title is going to be Cooking for Picky Eaters. Which I love, Cooking for Picky Eaters. I love it when someone says, oh, I'm a vegetarian, I'm a vegan, you can't cook for me. <laughs> Want to bet, Want to bet, sis? Yeah. Do that um, again. <laughs> I need a chuckle. Do that again. Why do you... I'm a vegetarian. Can you, you can't cook for me. I'm a vegan. Yeah. Um, I love picky eaters because <laughs> it's a challenge. It really. So, yeah, we're going to be talking about picky eaters and, and, and how the difference between how we were raised, how I was raised especially. Um, but, no, I love picky eaters. I love it because I'm, I keep notes. I keep files on all of my party guests. So, for example, I know Lance does need eggs. I've got that in my little database here. So I know when I'm clicking breakfast, no eggs, which forces me to then be creative. What else can I make besides bacon and eggs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, I'm a child of the 80s, so I remember when Valley Girls were brand new. Yeah. And sadly, even at almost 55, there are still a lot of Valley Girls in my world. <sighs> That sounds just like that. So we have that coming up. That's our next live stream. And we have... So what's, what do we got for Tuesday? Which we're hopefully filming in about another hour. We are. I just have to go meet some plaza and do some stuff. Um, we are having a really exciting couscous salad. Now, everyone thinks couscous is a grain. But guess what? It's actually a pasta. Uh, a lot of people get it confused with quinoa, which is a grain. So we have this wonderful... Um, couscous salad, and one of the surprise ingredients in it is fresh mint uh, that really adds this wonderful pop of flavor. Now, you might think, we're talking about dried herbs and spices. Can I use dried mint? I wouldn't. I would use fresh and something like that. Well, and we're going to introduce a new skill for most of you, and that's pickling. Yes, it also we're has... we're going to pickle Yep. Yep. So, and that's, we need to do that as a basic skill. That's in our list of upcoming basic skills. Last time I bought... Saffron, 564 per gram. Yeah, that's probably about right. It's expensive. And it takes a lot to make even a gram of it. I haven't bought it in a while. That's one of those things that I bought once and I used every little bit of it. Um, but yeah, I haven't, I actually haven't done recipes that call for it. Maybe for Valentine's Day. Maybe I'll open up the mousetrap and see what we can do for Valentine's Day. Now, someone asked, how do I get an invitation? Um, well, that depends. If I know you, if you're local, if you're semi-local, then I'll probably invite you. Um, Cocktail bribery works very, yes. very yeah. well. Yeah. Just saying. Uh huh. But you must love cats because we have five of them. And they live here and you don't. <laughs> so if you come into the house and say, oh, I'm allergic, can you lock them up? Sorry, <laughs> we don't lock them up. Oh, uh, here we go. What? Do you prefer to purchase spices online or in a local store? That's a good question. I've never bought them online. I love 
going, like when you can find one of those little stores, like an Amish market or Chelsea market or something, that's all spices and things. I've never bought them online. I was just going to say we should regale the Chelsea market spice um, trip. Oh, yeah. A few years ago, we decided, it was before we lived here, and we had a little extra money. And it was Thanksgiving. And it was Thanksgiving weekend, so... We weren't hosting. We had our family up for Thanksgiving, and we sent them home. And then Black Friday, we drove to New York, and we spent an extra long weekend in New York City. We went to Chelsea Market. We went to Food Network. We spent a lot of crazy money in all the stores in Chelsea Market, including this, they had this really great spice store. Barrels. And they had barrels. barrels and, and a lot of that stuff, I had no idea what it was. You know, you're going through, I'm like, wow, what is that? And it smelled wonderful. And of course, this is pre COVID. So, yeah, you could just go and scoop stuff up yourself. And, and it was some cool of the more... because they would give you, you could buy it like for $30, sort of like the old Chinese menu method, you know, one from column A and 13 right. from column B. And there were these tiny little tins. So it was only like an ounce. So you could bring back like dozens sampler. of things that you could try as yeah. samplers, uh -huh. not spend a lot of money. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a great way to do it. I don't think we did, though. We, I think we bought a couple things. I don't even remember what it was now. I mean, this was almost 10 years ago. But that was a great store. Yeah, our rule is if we can't touch it and feel it, we're not buying it online. Well, that's not true because the amount of times the Amazon driver comes here, dear. Yes, dear, but we don't have to touch that and feel it. Oh, here we go. Have you made infused oils or vinegars with fresh herbs? Yes, I have. And that's a great way to do it. Um, especially, I love infused vinegars. Oils can be tricky. I make garlic oil quite often, but I don't keep it around much because that is something that bacteria can breed in it really easily, even in your refrigerator. And one of the big scary ones is botulism, which is kind of nasty. Um, but I do make them occasionally. Vinegars are a little better because they're acidic, but... We're also spoiled because in our area we have a place called the Tales of the Olive yeah. uh -huh. that have you go into the store and we're used to wine tasting. This is olive and vinegar tastings. Yeah. And they have dozens of oils and vinegars that they make there and you can do a taste sample and they will then pour it in a bottle and vacuum seal it for you. Yeah. And we've gotten everything from we uh, have a balsamic vinegar that's infused with espresso. And oh yeah. when I say you could drink it straight from the bottle, it's amazing. Yep. They have, you know, you see that super thick balsamic vinegar. They have one there. It comes in little tiny bottles and it's very expensive, but ONG. Oh, this is a fun one just because. Favorite source for lavender, my garden. <laughs> that's what I was gonna say. Yep. Lavender grows really easily, and it comes back year after year. In fact, you have to watch it, uh, depending on where you live, because it can take over. In our old house, house in Paulsboro, yeah. we redid the front flower garden, and I had this teeny tiny little lavender pot, plant in a little pot that I'd been nursing along, and I finally said, this poor thing, let's put it in the ground just for the heck of it. Well, within a month, it had just exploded and it took over a whole big corner of this garden. But it was wonderful because in the spring and summer when we had all the windows open, the smell of the fresh lavender coming in, whenever I needed it, I'd just go out there and snip it away. In fact, this spring I want to plant out back lavender and sage because uh, sage is one of my favorites. What would you use lavender with? You can use lavender in so many things, Lance. Um, it makes great cocktails. It makes great cocktails. I would sneak it into a lot of sauces and vinaigrettes. And it's not necessarily a super powerful flavor, but there's that background like, what is that? I really like it. It's, yes, dear, I see your glass is empty. Mine is too. Settle down. The glass is empty, which probably means the show is about to end. Cause probably. My glass is empty. Yeah, we're a couple minutes over. Oh, well, we're having fun. Um, but yeah, lavender is great. It's great pairing with fish and poultry. And I just love it fresh. It just, it's even to have it, you know, on your dining room table when you're having a dinner party. You get that wonderful fragrance. All right, so we're wrapping up. It's 4.34. We're a little over. Yep, we Hours. are. Yeah, considering our five-minute intro, 
So as uh, for those of you who do stick in for the couple of minutes before we start, I'm experimenting with new music. So if you find some music or we've done some music that you really like, let me know and I'll kind of mash them up. Um, we have a new subscription to a music service, so I'm kind of having fun exploring. Oh, okay, I didn't know that, but okay. Yeah, that's all it. Right. All right. That's all the questions, too? I thought that's we all the questions. That. When I looked at the list, it seemed There's like a couple more... in Facebook, but I'm not going to put them in because we've actually covered them all. Okay. Let me scroll back through YouTube. Wow. YouTube's display still says we're on the intro. Okay, so we've got 12 people looking at once, and we've had 60 people. That's How about awesome. hitting the like button? Yeah. Please? Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Oh, here we go. We just got some more in. Here we go. Lavender. Okay. Lavender makes lemon and blueberry anything magical. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I agree. Yes. We, we, wait a minute. We've done a we lemon. Did we do a, a blueberry lavender cake? Blueberry lemon cake. Oh, blueberry lemon. Yes, from our friend Joanne Ventura. But yeah, you're right, Melissa. Lavender does. So we're just married gourmet. A magic gourmet oil and vinegar store. At one point, I seriously think yep. I had it over. I can see that. I can see that, Karen. Uh, yeah, because yeah, he bought me a couple of years ago from this Tales of the Olive a whole bunch of them, I and mean, he spent a sane amount of money. And uh, yeah, we, we didn't have quite thirty, but we had a lot, and it was kind of fun. Like it's fun to go in there and taste them. My favorite yeah. has been the lemon olive oil. I didn't care. That was bad. I didn't like the almond olive the almond oil. Almond was not good. But the balsamic vinegars were amazing, but they were expensive. A little tiny bottle like this was twenty-five dollars. So no Karen, music. did you use them all? I I still have two left. I have the espresso one that's almost gone, and one other one up there that is almost gone. Yeah, there's a couple that we went through. There was a lime one that was also very good. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, uh, Karen, we are making lemonies tonight. Yes. And then when they're done, we're going to try limeys. Because, you know, that's me. I'm a British limey fruitcake. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to be making your lemonies tonight, and we'll see how they come out. It looks like a brilliant, brilliant cake. All right. Let's, All right, let's wrap let's this wrap up, this dear, because we have to get filming. Yes, we do. So, from Peter and Phil, we will see you in two weeks mm -hmm. with How to Cook for Picky Eaters. Uh, and that really should be a whole lot of fun. Yeah. And maybe I'll cook something in that episode. I used most of them all already and gave some away when we moved. Okay. It's fun, though, using them and figuring out, like, oh, I think I'll add some of this flavor and see how it works out. And, well, and yeah. without kidding anybody, we are big salad people. We eat yeah, a salad we do. every single yeah. day. Mm -hmm. Every day. Wednesdays are what we call salad nights, where it's a full plate with yep. something over the top. But we eat a salad every day, so a lot of the balsamics and the flavored oils are what we use as dressing rather than the old ranch and Russian and Thousand yeah. Island and all those mm -hmm. weird things. Sometimes all you need is oil and vinegar. All right, let's wrap this up. We've got stuff to do. So thank you all for joining us. We'll see you Tuesday for our regular episodes, Fridays for cocktails and basic skills, and every other Sunday for more of these fun live streams. So until next time, I'm going to cheers you with water. Cheers. Cheers with an empty glass. Bye.